one always roll with you say dabs in the blood make the smoke all juicy turps in the smoke got it tasting fruit to your love tasting it on your lips when we smooch thanks for rolling up i'm two blood marley and this is certified pothead i'm smoking on one of my uh, afternoon spliffs you know we about to do bird club about to take a look at these cannabis conspiracy theories which i like to call yeah, the conspiracy theory. Today's theory revolves around Joan of Arc. Is it possible that Joan of Arc, the beloved hero of France, was simply too lit to quit? Imagine it. France, the 15th century. No Netflix, no smartphones, just a lot of medieval boredom. So what does Joan do to spice things up? Naturally, she listens to the saints, leads armies, and bakes a batch of medieval brownies on the side. Get God's calling. This girl was getting visions from something a little more greener. Buckle up, people, because we're about to blaze through history with one wild cannabis conspiracy theory. Here's a riddle for you. Chopped and I dropped. Through range did I rule. But my victims called me anything but cool. What am I? Let's start with the big question. If you were a peasant girl in 1425 and started hearing voices, would your first thought be, this is a sign from God, or maybe I accidentally wandered into a hemp field. Joan chose the former, bless her. But what if she was unknowingly puffing on something that would make anyone see saints and hear voices from beyond? Ever hear of the burning bush? Yeah, I bet that burned pretty well. Here's how I imagine it. Joan, just chilling in the meadow, munching on some herbal snack a village Hiller gave her, and the next thing you know, she's seeing saints like it's the 15th century equivalent of a laser show at a Pink Floyd concert. She's like, St. Michael, you said I'm supposed to lead the French army. Wow, that's high praise. Note to self, next time I hear voices, I'll check the snacks before declaring myself a national savior. Here's another riddle for you. I led the committee. My power grew wide, but soon the same too ended my pride. I spoke of virtue, demanded no slack. What revolutionary figure am I who never came back? Okay, real talk, peeps. How does a 13-year-old even come up with the idea to crown a king and drive out the English? I was barely figuring out. Long division at 13, let alone plotting military campaigns. Maybe she wasn't thinking so clearly because she had her head in the clouds. Literally. Now, medieval France wasn't exactly known for its cutting-edge cannabis culture, but... Let's not underestimate the power of a good medieval remedy. Back then, people used cannabis and medicinal brews to cure headaches, insomnia, and apparently to inspire divine missions. Joan might have been sipping on a little medieval special tea and boom, next thing you know, she's ready to launch Operation Crown Charles the Eighth, seven, six, seven, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one. I don't know what Charles. I mean, who needs five hour energy when you got five grams of that Saint Sativa? Here's another riddle for you. I once wore a crown and lived in great style, but soon I was met with public trial. I lost my head and people did cheer. Who was I, the last king they'd ever revere? Here's the million dollar question. Were those saints Joan kept seeing really divine messengers or just clever strains of weed? Think about it. Joan said she regularly heard from St. Michael, St. Catherine, and St. Margaret. But let's get real. But they were just some fantastically named strains that medieval France had on the down low. St. Michael OG gives you a nice boost of courage and makes you feel invincible. Perfect for leading armies in the battle. Catherine Cush. That's for those reflective, serene moments of planning. And Margaret Hayes could have been that creative burst she needed to outwit the english forces each saint had a special purpose and let's be honest if jane was puffing on those herbs the voices suddenly make a whole lot of sense now that i think about it whenever i start hearing advice from strangers it's usually my neighbor carl yelling over the fence joan got to let you advice and i get unsolicited garden attempts here's another riddle for you i am the cry of the people they're rallying chair Liberté elegante were words that they'd held dear. The third part of me is what they all yearned. What slogan am I by revolution earned? Would you follow a stoner into battle? Well, think about it. Would you follow someone into battle who claimed to be hearing voices from saints? I mean, I can't even trust my GPS when it tells me to take the shortest route. 
let alone with some kid who just declared she's the chosen one after a particularly reflective afternoon in the meadow. There was something about Joan, whether it be divine confidence or the medieval munchies that rallied an entire army. Let's picture Joan riding into battle, armor gleaming, sword held high, shouting, We're friends, and for snacks, probably. Troops, confused but inspired, follow her into the fray, mostly because no one else had a better plan. After all, in medieval France, your options are for liber. I got to stop talking, bruh. Your options for leadership were limited to possibly inspired or definitely crazy. You know what they say, you either die a hero or live long enough to become really suspiciously chill about the English army. The rules. Answers to the riddles. Guillotine. Robbins Pierre. King Louis the Sixteenth. Liberté. Elegante. Fraternity. See y'all in the next one, bruh.